This video provides an overview of the three capstone options for HPBS students. The three options are the needs assessment, the program plan, and the program evaluation. It's important to note that a written description of the parameters for each of these is provided on the Canvas homeroom, and you must review them before selecting and executing any of the capstone options that you choose. The needs assessment is the first of the three options. The specifications of this option are to determine the specific health needs of a population in the context of a program or campaign development. So what we do in public health often, most often, should result in some sort of intervention program policy change that is based on the stated and documented needs of a community. And so when we are collecting data about what's happening in a community, what the perceived needs are, what the actual needs are, um, we want to think about how this information could be used to either encourage the development of future programs, the changing of existing policies, um, or to actually inform the adaptation of something that is already existing that maybe has been underused. Um, the needs assessment should keep an eye towards the strengths, the resources, and the capabilities of our communities. Often we see individuals um, think about a community without the, the existing strengths in mind, and that can do a disservice to the community. And so we want to elevate the voices of the community. We do not want to be claiming to speaking for our community members when we are presenting the results of the needs assessment. Really the point of this version of the capstone is to let the community tell us what their experiences are so that we as experts in methodology can identify the programs, practices, or po policies that are best suited to address their needs and to elevate their existing strengths and capabilities. An example of a recently completed needs assessment capstone completed by one of our HPBS students was an examination of the health status and the use of campus health services among student veterans or student service members enrolled at SDSU. This student really wanted to identify how to promote health as well as um, academic success among military connected service members on campus at SDSU. They executed this project in collaboration with the Student Veterans Center on campus, as well as Student Health Services, the Health Promotion and Wellbeing Center. How they executed this project was they did a mixed methods design where they administered a quantitative survey through Qualtrics to service members on campus. They administered this survey by posting a link and an invitation to participate on the student veteran Facebook pages and through their email list serve. Um, the questionnaire assessed current health status, perceived health needs, and awareness of and use of the available health services on campus at SDSU. They also then selected a subset of people who participated in the survey and conducted one-on-one -on -one interviews to elucidate more um, these service, these student service member and veterans experiences. So what factors um, promoted their health, what were the strengths that they brought and the strengths of their prior experiences that helped them succeed and maintain their health while they were studying at SDSU, but what additional support services could they use and what other health issues um, were they experiencing. And the results of this needs assessment was really powerful because what they determined was that the needs, the health needs of student veterans are different than non-student veterans and that a lot of these veterans weren't aware that they were eligible for very services um, on campus that would make them healthier and more likely to succeed academically. And so Student Health Services and the Veterans Center was really grateful to receive this information because they could potentially modify the way that they promote their services and the way they deliver their services as well as what they offer to best meet the needs of our student veterans. 
some tips for a needs assessment, you're assessing the needs. You will be required to collect and analyze some sort of data. Maybe it's not you executing the interviews, but ideally you'd get experience doing that. Um, but maybe the data ends up in your hands from your community partner and you play a role in analyzing it. Qualitative methods are really important in needs assessment if you can propose them, if you can execute them. That's how we best hear the voices of our community members. Um, and it takes really strong community connection, trust with the community, um, a respectful approach to execute a needs assessment. The program plan is probably the least commonly completed option um, in terms of the capstone for reasons that might be made clear as I explain this a little bit more. So in this option, our students are expected to develop a plan to implement a theoretically based and culturally and contextually appropriate public health intervention or program in a community um, setting in partnership with an organization. Um, the plan should have specific goals, objectives, and procedures. An example of a student who did pursue this option was a student who was working with a local um, hydroponic farming and nutritional um, organization. And what this student did was she developed an educational curriculum, a several weeks long educational curriculum designed for local elementary school students to teach them about hydroponic farming and um, nutritional practices. So what are the benefits of farming? What are the benefits of community gardening? And what are key components of nutrition um, to maximize health? And so she developed the actual curriculum, including the materials that the, the teachers would use when delivering this program. And then she also developed um, a handbook for the teachers so that they felt comfortable delivering the material. And she developed an, eva an evaluation plan, which spans into the third type of capstone and um, isn't necessarily required, but um, designing you know, a way to evaluate the program plan is never a bad idea. So tips for the program plan, you are not responsible for actually executing the intervention. Um, it is ideal if you are able to be involved in executing the intervention, but at the bare minimum, you should leave your preceptor with a product that will facilitate their future implementation of the program, including as the previous student that I just described um, did uh, handouts, educational materials, um, and potentially, if it's feasible, a plan for evaluating the program as well. Um, when doing the program plan option, it's really important to review your notes from your theory class and from your motivating health behavior class to revisit the principles of intervention mapping and program planning. Finally, we have program evaluation. In this option, you evaluate an existing public health or health promotion program. This can include a process evaluation or an impact or outcome evaluation or both. An example of a a uh, student who completed a program evaluation was one of our students who was working at the county, and she was involved in an evaluation of the county's emergency warning system. Um, this is a warning system when there's a fire, an earthquake, a flood. Um, it's an alert that goes out to people who have enrolled or agreed to receive these warnings. And this program um, had not been evaluated before, and they had recently made efforts to ensure that the notifications went out in um, as many languages as possible. You can imagine the number of languages that individuals in San Diego County speak, and so they wanted to make sure that everybody could understand these messages if they received them. And so she evaluated, um, it was kind of a program evaluation or a process and outcome evaluation. She evaluated the delivery of the program. So was the system that was sending out the messages working? Were all of the um, uh, translations going out and being um, appropriately delivered and translated? And then were people receiving and acting on the messages that they were receiving? as part of this warning system. Some tips on the program evaluation. Um, again, data collection and analysis will be required. Maybe you're not actually collecting the data. Hopefully you are, but hopefully you also have a big hand in analyzing that data. 
Um, you will want to keep the principles of program evaluation and research methods in mind, but you need to be prepared to be flexible. Most programs delivered by government agencies and nonprofit agencies and community organizations might not have the capacity to do a rigorous empirical randomized controlled trial where you have a control group and an intervention group. Um, and so you have to work with what is feasible. If you are not able to execute an evaluation that you think is the highest degree of rigor, that's okay. Your discussion section of your plan will explain that and you will make your recommendations for what the organization could do to improve the evaluation if the resources permitted in the future. So that's just a brief introduction to each of the three types. I do encourage you to read the examples of each of these that are um, in the shared drive for your re review.